Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Get Ready. Uh, very pleased about today's episode because I'm speaking with a dear friend of mine. So let me tell you a little bit about my friend, Jenny Clift. She's a professional violinist and an EFT tapping coach. She has worked with individuals and groups online, helping them to discover and clear the hidden blocks, traumas, and subconscious limiting beliefs around their artistry, their money, and becoming more visible and successful in their career. She combines this with her musical life gig gigging in and around Madrid, Spain, where she lives. Welcome to the show, Jenny Clift. Oh, it's great to be here and a great honor to be here, Brad. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. We we go back a ways and uh... we do. Yeah. <laughs> so, in fact, let's uh, let's start there. How did we meet, Jenny? Yes. Yeah. We met because I was in dire straits, really. Um, I was at a point in my career, my musical career, where I was, I'd kind of done a, the transition, transitioning, if you like, into a bit of a satellite career. I wanted to perform and I was really doing a lot of teaching. So, um, and successfully, I had a big studio of little violinists and, um, <laughs> and I was getting more and more angry and frustrated what I wanted to be doing was much more performing but there were a lot of limiting beliefs there a lot of beliefs of I'm not good enough there's too many people blah 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 and I was trying to sort it out using affirmations and you know stating the positive and everything it really wasn't working for me <laughs> <laughs> I was just getting more and more mad and just you know I don't believe a word of what I'm saying and um I was so relieved to go online and find and see a tapping video it wasn't yours I'm sorry it was another person I okay well we can edit that out go ahead <laughs> 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 and, but then very quickly Brad I did start using your your tapping videos and then I um emailed you and and we started working together and I remember the first lesson let me just tell the story it's hilarious we tapped about my a uh, violin professor when I was at music college and it, it was not a good fit let's just say that he was <laughs> Hungarian very strict very tough and after the college experience I actually gave up the violin for eight years so it was it was non it was a process but that's the stage I got to so I remember our, I think it was the second tapping round maybe was uh, even though Bella Catona sounds like a disease or something <laughs> and it was so fabulous just suddenly yes it was true it did and laugh at it and start really clearing the energy and so you know I really was hooked after that as you as you know we worked together a lot and performing but then so many things both on stage and off stage around, because I always think of it as a, the most amazing career, being a musician or an artist, but also incredibly challenging, you know, and it's, and it's scary at yeah. times. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you've had some great gigs since the, the, look, working on that musical was, um, yes, a really yes. lovely, uh, yes. Yeah. And that was after, and I was already tapping, um, yeah. start because I, I, after working with, well, we worked together for, it was about five years working and me going to your workshops and everything. It was amazing. And then I wrote my book, which was kind of a homage to you. Okay. <laughs> and Quick plug, else. The Music Inside, wonderful book. Um... <laughs> with a wonderful forward, by yeah. the <laughs> yeah. which I remember asking you for, for about, about two days before. And you sort of said, mm, could have given me a bit more time, Jen. <laughs> But because it was you, I said yes. Thank you. But, but and, and that then, was the wonderful thing is that you had taken the work that we had done and how it had allowed you to expand in your musical career, yeah. but then taking that to other musicians. Yeah. And it was really gratifying for me to see you then adopt this technique to then reach out and and bring other musicians along with you to help them clear their their blocks of limiting beliefs and allow themselves to be more visible. Yeah, totally, totally. And um, I, it was funny when I started thinking, okay, I'm going to start coaching and everything. And I got some training under my belt. But at the beginning, I was not working with musicians. And there was definitely, it was about two years. And it was partly kind of a, a feeling of, 
are musicians, are other artists, are they going to accept this woo-woo nonsense sort of thing? <laughs> and, and also the fact that, you know, as a musician, you're expected to do that, that there's there's been this idea coming back through the ages that if you're a real musician or a real artist, that is all you do. You know, it's for a violinist, it's eight hours a day. For an, a painter, presumably, it's just that is what you do. Yes. And I believe, well, and we see it all over in the world, People are more multidimensional now. And so for me um, to be able to do something else as well was really actually really important and helped eventually help my music more. So when I started working in this musical, that is when I started, uh, I started working with the singers, with the actors and thinking, nah, they won't be interested. And then there was one woman who, Oh, she was the lead singer. It was a, a Spanish musical and it was the last three years of Jesus Christ's life. And she was Mary Magdalene or yes. And she had lost her voice and it, which is not good. Obviously. <laughs> and, for a and so we worked on that, but quite quickly realized she'd lost her mother earlier that year, but mm. had not had a single chance to mourn. Her mother and so this kind of uh, losing her voice it was almost like you know when am I ever going to get a chance to process my emotions and everything and we worked together and it, she was so receptive that it really encouraged me to start um, working with other musicians as well and singers a lot of singers I always used to think violinists were the most screwed up oh, I think <laughs> it's really tough and so um yeah, so that was really enlightening for me that people are actually really, and of course, musicians and uh, and actors, I mean, you're an actor as well. They're so in touch with their body. They're so in touch with their emotions. They're so in touch with energy, even though they may not call it energy, but we all understand the, you know, a, an audience who's receptive or uh, the energy between the yes. cast members or the orchestra and the, and that, you know, playing in an orchestra of 120 people and and that energy that you create. And I'd never called it energy before, but of course it is. Yes. And so you, re I realized very quickly that this is ideal yes. for, the, for this profession, quite apart from all the fears and doubts and all the rest of it. We... <laughs> right. Yeah, everything is energy. And, and absolutely, as performers, we, we feel that uh, from our fellow performers, from the audience, that that's why I still do, love doing live workshops more than anything because you you feel that energy. But being able to manage your own energy so that you can make the most of of what you're doing, and uh, you know, and I, I love that just on the cover that you use the prism because I talk about that a lot when I'm working with artists, um, particularly musicians, that we're a prism. Source is coming in. It's like the light coming in and we want it to come out as this beautiful rainbow. But if the prism is smudged, <laughs> we don't get quite the Locked same yeah. effect. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. speaking of those uh, smudges on prisms, what do you find is the, the what are the biggest smudges that uh, that you're working with with folks? Yeah, well, and that I had to work on for yeah. myself as well. I think the most obvious one is the whole stage fright performance anxiety and that becomes especially um acute let's say for audition and for you know anyone who's doing that kind of really high stake kind of performance um and i've worked with so many people i do a thing with with that i call real time tapping and it's because one thing that musicians do a lot are mock auditions so you play to your friends or you play to a significant other and go through all the pieces. But that doesn't, it, it helps, of course, and it's a little bit like immersion therapy or exposure therapy. But mm -hmm. what I've found that in, if you've already got some level of trauma, which most of us have around, I'm not good enough or I'm, uh, or, you know, I can't play this piece or whatever, then the more you do it, it doesn't really help. In, in fact, sometimes it can just accumulate more bad experiences, more thoughts of I'm not good enough and everything. So what I do with people is actually 
horrors bring their instrument to the and we, we're working online play well first we tap you know how are you feeling oh horrified I mean I don't know about other musicians but classical musicians do not like being asked to get their instrument out at, on a whim you know so sort of, you have to be prepared you have to have it perfect and everything and so just that is scary so we tap you know sort of even though I'm really anxious right now and do that then we play they play a little bit and mm -hmm. then we tap on I don't know measure 72 which was a complete disaster and and so it's so you can get so into the nitty-gritty of it yeah. and um, you know as you uh, uh, this uh, a, being able to be so precise and go exactly to where it is it, it's so valuable and it's then, like the uh the positive stuff mm, yeah well yeah. what they call the uh the tell the story technique in eft this is play the story yeah <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah. And where do you get blocked? Where do you, um, those thoughts come in, you know, yeah. sort of, oh my God, the 16th note passage is coming up and it's going to be a disaster. Yeah. So often the problem as performers is, is what's coming. Yeah. You know, it's not. I'm Every not time the oboe comes in, it just messes me. <laughs> For example. Yeah. Unless you are the oboist and then it's the yeah. clarinet. <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. there's so always someone um, yeah that's what i would say is that very often a starting point and one thing and i remember you and i talked about this when we were tapping together this idea that nerves are necessary and it, it actually it really kind of pisses me off excuse my <laughs> british but um uh i think of you know would you say to a brain surgeon I hope you're nervous, you know, because you should be nervous. Otherwise, you're not obviously not concentrating you're not, or a pilot. You know, I hope you're scared and you're thinking, really, I don't want my pilot to be. And yet a musician, I remember growing up, I was told this so many times, all oh, nerves, you know, it's important to be nervous. That shows, you know, so you're kind of engaged and everything. But it's a disaster. So much of the time, physically, it takes you over and it's just and it feels horrible. And it messes with your performance. So that is one of the things which I just think, no, this yeah. is just an idea we've had planted. And I remember you saying to me, Brad, because they didn't have any other solutions for this. So at least, well, we'll just say, okay, they're necessary. <laughs> yeah. And if they felt it, if, if I get nervous in front of an audience, I don't want to say, well, I'm doing it wrong. You don't need to be nervous. I'm the one who's got an issue. I'm going to say, well, I'm going to justify it and say, this shows that I care about my audience. Mm -hmm. Well, and those are great examples you gave. Mm -hmm. If a brain surgeon's like, your hands should be shaky or you obviously don't care about your patient. Yes. For a pilot, you should be nervous. Otherwise, you don't care about your passengers. Passengers, yeah. And yeah. especially as, as a musician, you know, you've got intricate fingering. <laughs> you're, you're fretting. It's like mm -hmm. shaky fingers is not really helpful. It's not conducive. You know, I can imagine Mozart writing a symphony and say, OK, I really want the violinists to have really shaky fingers during this. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it becomes this thing of. Well, I feel nervous, so I'm going to justify that by saying it's it's an act of care for my audience. It means that I'm treating this with significance and I'm going to pass that on and tell others that that's the way it should be. Otherwise, I look like I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. And, you know, hey, great. People are doing the best they can, but allowing yourself to see it. You said, we want people on their best game. Yeah. And we Absolutely. want to uh, and be free. enjoying themselves as well. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, I've seen this now, but with, for example, I have a, a, a client sheet and she's just amazing. She's a singer, an opera singer. And she was, had to do a recording and she was so nervous and you know throat tightening up again not good for singers diaphragm tight all the rest of it and and that idea of okay so what do you do um if you don't have something like tapping yes we can try and talk ourselves out of it and we know how ineffective <laughs> that is and um or you know i remember advice i would get would be stay very still and i kind of get it the attempt to um, 
I suppose, ground or bring down. But in fact, I've found for me at least, maybe everyone's a bit different, actually shaking it off, tapping, moving the energy is more helpful for me. So right before a concert, if I'm nervous or a call or something, I do tap and I tap around and I call it out. You know, this nervous energy in my stomach, wherever it is. Yeah. And then in a couple of rounds, I can, it's, it's more under control. So, you know, having these tools, which of course we didn't use to have and no one had heard of. And so now I think nerves are not really necessary. Now I have, I, from going from saying zero nerves, I've kind of gone, okay, let's use the 80, 20 thing, which is so <laughs> helpful, isn't it? For everything. Instead of, <laughs> 80% of nerves, let's go to 20% of nerves. And so, you know, there's nothing wrong with having that kind of butterflies in your stomach, right. but not when it's messing. With right. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not an idea that there's something wrong with it, that it's that it's bad. Just letting go of the belief that it's necessary, that you should yeah. be nervous. Yeah. Because yeah. then we then we look at it and go, oh, okay. And if we're feeling more calm, then we're thinking, okay, what's wrong? Why I'm, I, I'm doing yeah. it's like, no, yeah. if there are nerves, great. Okay. That's, yeah. that's where I'm at, but I, I don't have to. It's, I, it's not like I'm going, oh, I feel really shaky right now. Oh, good job. I'm, I'm a professional <laughs> musician well, yeah. um, <laughs> as an actor, yeah. you know, yeah. if I, if I was nervous before my mouth dried up, not a very good thing when you when you need to speak and i'm i been i remember auditions or things where i'm like i can barely speak <laughs> yeah yeah you know suddenly your tongue so, grows to double size and well, yeah. Yeah. yeah so um yeah we bring it down as much as we can yeah yeah what yeah. Uh, mm. and i know you've got have a program on on visibility and that's one of the main things is because as as well, all of us as human beings, we have gifts to share. Uh, and it's what stops us from doing that. And, and particularly as artists, it's like, well, sharing your gift is generally in front of an audience. <laughs> it may just be, it may be in a recording studio, but... Which in some ways is worse. <laughs> which in some ways in, is worse. Than the, but, the whole perfectionist yeah. thing. Yeah. But there's mm -hmm. something about, okay, I, if I'm playing music, Ideally, it's going to be heard. Yeah. Uh, it, I may be seen as an actor. I may very likely be seen. Any kind of performer, it's that that being seen and heard. And yet that's one of the biggest fears that, that many, if not most human beings have. But it's particularly troublesome for, for a performer who's part of the job is, well, you have to be seen and heard. <laughs> Yeah. And the, and the desire that's there. Yes. I mean, I think of this as kind of the visibility paradox, because I, I believe that we all come in with not just one purpose, but several purposes. And as an artist, one of your purposes is to share your music or your art, your speaking, whatever it is. Your, and and yet there is then we get all these layers of conditioning around not showing off you know I mean how many times was I told to shut up at school by teachers <laughs> and you know don't show off don't stand up give the other children a chance and so all of this we just build it up and although I think we have this intense desire to share what we uh, our way of doing it but then we're told you know there are other people who do it better and there's so much conditioning so much um and so then we get the I'm not good enough and the it has to be perfect. And who am I to share? You know, I'm not that special. And they're all things that we've picked up along the way. And so and for me, that all kind of comes into the visibility thing because it's getting in the way of of either allowing ourselves to be visible at all or enjoying our visibility. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Step one, get yourself out there. But two. Yeah. Step two. Have fun with it. <laughs> yeah. Don't beat yourself up after you've managed to, yeah, to do it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, it, it, it's a, that brings in so many different things. And, um, yeah, and I, I agree with you. I think everyone, I, I'm always amazed, but it's, I suppose it's normal that, you know, public speaking is one of the biggest phobias. And as a violinist, I'm like, oh, God, I can speak till the cows come home. I can't play the violin, but, <laughs> or, you know, I mean, or it's much harder to play the violin. 
but and so you do of course get trained into being able to be up on stage and everything but it's the same kind of fears and and doubts and you know not for for anyone you even not in music or or performing in any kind of way it's any any area of life where we sh- where we need to show up yeah. for whatever size audience even if it's an audience of one even if it's over the phone but there's yeah all of this programming about why we couldn't or shouldn't be seen or heard mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and there's that intense desire as you said to share that gift i really want to but i shouldn't i'm not allowed to i you know i'm not good enough whatever that is and and being able to shift that, it's like, look, I, I'm awesome. I'm going to share it. I'm not going to be right for everybody because nobody is, yeah. you know? And that, pe- that's a tough one to get to. I think we all want to be universally loved and accepted. And, of course, it's in our biology. And I, I think the other thing that we want so much, and I think a lot of people don't get when they're growing up, is to be listened to. And so whether it's with your violin or whether it's just speaking and everything. And, you know, I mean, I'm a mother. I, my children are now grown up but when they were little. Yeah, I didn't always listen to them. You don't have time and everything. But I, I, I think, you know, most of us do have maybe a deficit of please hear me. You know, you hear people saying the same thing over and over again and you can just hear them saying, I need to know that you're hearing me. And that's actually something, Brad, that I love about tapping, because the fact that you repeat or I repeat back their words is, you know, is so for me, it was just mind boggling instead of the kind of, oh, I hear you saying, and then you start turning and making it sound a bit more wrapped up and nice and tidy or, you know, and for me, just hearing, I, you know, whatever I just blurted out back yeah. from your mouth or it's so it's just incredible and um that feeling of oh my god they were listening they heard what I said it is so so valuable it's it's amazing I haven't thought about that before maybe that's yeah. why I enjoy this work so much it's like they're listening to me <laughs> it's really amazing you know I I you know I think to be able to do it for someone else and then when, you know, working with someone, it's, it's so validating, you know, my, oh my goodness, my words are actually worth hearing, you know, and, you know, it, it's, it's a bit like one thing I've been doing recently is going on Instagram, which was, took a lot of tapping, I can tell you, um, <laughs> and doing little videos. And I always thought I have nothing to say. I have nothing you know, very interesting. And I've been doing these little three minute videos and it's been amazing just to, I mean, it's not a lot of interaction, but for me, it's just that, yeah, you know what? I can do little bite size and that idea of, yes, I think we all have so many things we really want to be able to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for everyone listening to that, just hearing that and just recognize that 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 part of you that might say, "I, I can't, I shouldn't, I, it's like, work through that yeah and of course tapping helps uh hashtag tapping helps um (laughs) to to give yourself that freedom to share your gifts and talents yeah you know whether they're in in music or in the arts or whatever whatever field yeah no one's here by accident (laughs) nobody shows up empty-handed with nothing to offer Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and that thing is allow finding those ways to to clear whatever is stopping you from from being seen and heard, so that your gift can be uh, seen and heard. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, I am very grateful that you do what you do to help people share their gifts and talents more, and uh, and there's many ways that Jenny does that, and inc- links to the book. And, and other things will be on the page, tapwithbrad.com forward slash Jenny. Uh, Thank you. And yeah, I just hope that a lot of folks will, will check out the, the ways that you help. And especially because the, just the wonderful perspective that you have as a, as a performing artist. Um, yeah, that, I've uh, kind of been there, felt that, done that, yeah. <laughs> that, picked myself back up and everything. Yeah, I mean... 
mm-hmm. and gone on to delight all kinds of people with your art. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, the, the com- comparison things, oh, but it's not nearly as good as, but then, yeah, getting coming to terms with that, that, you know, I remember you once said to me, Brad, that, you know, the way you play might be the first way that that person can really hear this piece of music and you know this idea that we're we are channeling so that takes out the ego and then we have our own way of interpreting it that helped me so much and you know that I pass that on to my clients as well because it's it's so important you know yeah. so, yeah. I say that to other EFT practitioners it's mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you know we might be saying the same thing but someone out there isn't going to hear it until they hear it from you you know, like with your tapping videos, people can watch one of your tapping videos and they'll hear something and get it in a certain way that they won't get from me. And some people will be like, oh, yeah, I much prefer Jenny's videos to Brad's, <laughs> you know, just just like people can say, oh, you know, I prefer Gil Shaham to, um, you know, Joshua Bell or or whoever. And, you know, and recognizing in, in terms of the universally, uh, you know, I've met people like, yeah, I'm not a big Mozart fan. <laughs> and it's like, okay, if Mozart can't have everybody like his music, who are, who are the rest of us to, to expect that I'm going to be universally the favorite of everybody? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and yet... <laughs> We all want that <laughs> until we've done enough. Until we tap that. through that. <laughs> yeah, until we tap through it. And, and res- no, it's not a rejection or an outright. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or th- there's no space for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because everybody has an audience. Yeah. yeah. Our, our gifts are meant for somebody. I, I, I believe in a, I don't, I don't believe in a cruel creator that would say, All right, here's my deal. I'm going to give you gifts and talents, but there's not going to be anybody who's going to appreciate them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's, it's so we need to clear whatever stops us from getting out there and sharing what we have to offer yeah you bet <laughs> sharing that music inside there we go oh, thank you for what you do to uh to help people find that thank you too brad and um you know thank you for inspiring me and um yeah and then bringing me along in this journey because um it's it's so amazing and i really appreciate you um here today and and always so thank you well likewise likewise